So just then from the A Gallery, uh, uh, I don't know how I found out about Karen Gallery, but somehow I heard that this was the place to be. So I contacted Kim and she graciously allowed me to bring paint here. Um, uh, and um, the A Gallery has closed, so there's nowhere in Hattiesburg, and I keep suggesting to Kim that she should have a branch of Kim of Care Gallery in Hattiesburg. I have the perfect location, but she hasn't taken my advice yet. Yeah, that's really started out something for myself, and it because my husband loves to hunt. And I never begrudged him going hunting. He would take, sometimes he took all five kids so I could stay home and watch the Iron Bowl by myself. Um, obviously, he didn't kill a deer that day. But he had that hobby, that thing that was his love. And I just didn't have that until I started painting. And so now it's like laundry. Yeah, y'all go do the laundry. I've got to go out there and go to pay. Um, but now that the children have, have grown and pretty self-sufficient, it's just something I get to do and I, I love it. It's sort of like an itch that you want to scratch. And um, so if I go a week and I haven't gotten to go in and be creative, then um, you know, it's not good for my psyche. But probably most of what and maybe I should talk about this the second time, but I know Ramsey is studying art, her friend Caroline is studying art, and so much of what art is artists are taught now is to communicate some sort of a message. Um, and I don't think like that. What The way I paint and what I love to paint are when I see something in nature or I see something that just Sometimes it's literally the scene behind a model in a catalog. And I think, look at that beach day, or look at that. And that's, I love to recreate what I'm seeing. Not so much trying to, to communicate a message. So it absolutely is so thrilling when someone sees one of my paintings and wants to take it to their house. Because that means it spoke to them in some way. And um, so that's what I do, and I, I sometimes do still lives. I sometimes, mostly do landscapes. Um, I love the painting children, and that was one of the first paintings I did was of all five of my children sitting on the beach, <coughs> but not their faces, just their backs. <laughs> and that's what got me into the, the Emerging Artist Show. Um, so that's something I'm striving for one day to become better at the figure, but um, the landscape is really what I would love to paint, so. <laughs> but just something to think about as you're finished, we go on to our next meal, is, um, our next part of our meal, is why do you buy art? You know, so many of us um, want to decorate and make our house look a certain way, and maybe you're buying art to match your couch or to match your bedspread, and, and that is fine, but I would encourage you to think about, if you see a piece in here that speaks to you, whether it matches your house or not, it will always speak to you. And that's one thing that original art um, is, differs than the truck art that you can buy anywhere is that it has that personal touch and it, it can speak to you. So, um, some of you are young and you're probably where I was and your husband maybe says we don't have a budget for art, um, but that's something you can strive for and buy things, buy art that you love, you will always love. I have paintings hanging in my house that were in my room as a little girl that I still love that I've inherited from my parents. Um, because I know there's not another piece anywhere in the world like it, and I just love them. So, um, as you think about sitting in this room and you see things that you love, that's, that's what art should be. It should be a thing that makes you happy, a thing that brings you peace, that reminds you of a place. Um, that's what we artists want our customers to to buy art for. 
So with that, we can go on to our next course. <laughs> yourself to see those shapes that the color makes or the light makes is what makes a painting interesting. So when I look back at my, I should have brought some, but when I look back at some of my first paintings, they were very flat. I was very proud of them because I hung them up all over my house, but they were very flat. So I'm learning, and I will continue be continually be learning this, to see big shapes all the way down to small shapes. So you start with the hunters. That's my husband and my son and my two sons. And I omitted my daughter because in the photograph that I took, she was standing behind the guide and all you saw was her ponytail. So she's like, why didn't you put me in the painting? And I'm like, I just didn't have a good shot of you. So that's a, those are, that's a memory that a couple of Thanksgivings ago, we all went out and we went quail hunting, which um, not all of us hunted. Some of us just took pictures of me. Um, but when I come back, I just the, the colors, the mistiness of it was so beautiful. Um, the painting of the tree in the puddle, I was driving back from Starkville, visiting my kids, and I was by myself. And so when I'm by myself, a lot of times I'll take side roads or I'll let myself stop and take a picture of something that I've seen that caught my eye. And I just love the way um, that was a plowed field and the water had puddled in some of the tractor marks. So it's things like that that just is, I think that's beautiful. And I think that's so Mississippi and it's so startful Mississippi and it just, um, the, the egret that's down the bottom, you probably can't see, was, um, so I said my husband was a um, veterinarian who works at Sanderson Farms, so he's a chicken doctor. And my friends laugh at how um, the chickens industry has let us go all over this world. So we have gone to meetings in South Africa and in Paris and in um, just wonderful places. You wouldn't think such a redneck kind of industry <laughs> that would take you to those wonderful places, but it does. So that egret was on a safari that I got to go on when we were in South Africa. Um, so there's a horse, and um, that actually is a picture from a friend of mine that she took on Insta, put it on Instagram. So I'm constantly looking at my friend's pictures on Instagram and sending a message saying, "Do you mind if I paint this? I love what you just took." But the horse in the photograph was just a chestnut. But growing up, I had a chestnut. Her name was Dream, and she had the white star in her forehead. So I added the star in memory of my horse dream. Um, so learning how to not only see um, something and find something beautiful, um, one of the, the things I've been challenged to do is do more plain air painting because that's very intimidating. I've, I've, I love photography, so I'll take pictures and then I will paint the picture. But when you're out in the wide open, you, you, you think, well, where do I start? Where do I paint? But the colors really are, and the light is so different when you're out, and you cannot capture that in a photograph, and I'm learning that. So occasionally I will go out when it's not too hot or too cold or too many bugs out, and I will um, find some places around Hattiesburg to paint. Um, we've recently moved out into the country, so I've, I've found some trails and some trees that uh, will go out and paint. But it helps train your eye to see more than just a green tree. But that tree has 50 different shades of green. The, the darks and the lights and the shapes. And so learning to see that is probably... Um, where I am now and even painting still lives learning to be loose one of the things that my mom one of the first lessons she taught me 
was the difference between a hard edge and a soft edge. And how to create that softer edge, which in painter's terms would be loose, painting loose. So when I first started painting, everything was very tight. Um, but I'm learning to loosen and let the brush um, make some happy mistakes sometimes. Sometimes those are the, the prettiest part of the painting to me. It's something I didn't try to do. I just made a mark and it, it worked. So, um, you know, I'll look around here and I see a lot of really loose paintings. I, nothing is too um, realistic, which people that paint realistically blow my mind because they're so, such good drawers. But, um, but my goal is for something to be, have a softer look. Um, and I guess my color palette is not so bright and garish. Every once in a while, I'll pull out some pinks and some purples. But for the most part, I, I love earth tones. I, my house is decorated pretty much in uh, earth tones. That's just what I'm drawn to. So it's, there again, it's what I'm seeing in nature, not so much um, something I'm creating. Um, yeah, so most everything I paint is either something I have seen a lot of trips between Hattiesburg and Montgomery, Alabama, where my parents <coughs> live. There's some beautiful farmland, and I was always sometimes snapping pictures while the car is still moving because the clouds were so beautiful or the, the lighting was so beautiful. Um, yeah, that's pretty much how, why I do what I do, and kind of my, my, my subjects and my method. How do you determine your canvas size? Whatever frames are sold, I pick those canvases. <laughs> no. um, that's a good question, because I do, do, I do work on different sizes. Um, for instance, the gallery in Jackson sells primarily large pieces, so she wants larger pieces, not as many smaller pieces. Here, um, Kim has been very successful with selling all different sizes. And you think about when you're buying a piece of art, you may not have room for a big piece, but you may fall in love with something small that you're going to put next to your bed or you know somewhere that you see every day in your, on your, in your kitchen. Or So we need different sizes. Um, so I do try, it was a challenge, it was fun actually painting all the small ones for the car box because I could put three canvases up at once and it was like you could whip them out and that was, that was very satisfying. But that's not normally a size that I would paint, a small. Um, I like the medium size, the 30 by 40s. Um, I've done some 4 by 4s, some done one for myself in my house that's a um, 48 by 60. It's the biggest I've ever had. And it, I don't think it would fit in my car. So no, that may determine it also. I almost didn't get one out today. I was like, I know I got it in. How did I have to turn it just right? I guess I need a bigger car. Can you speak to the influence between your three generations of artists your mom and yourself and your daughter, you like landscapes? Did she and your mom influence you in that way? Absolutely. Kind of influence her or not? Yes. We've not influenced her at all. She's got her <laughs> own style and it is so cool. Um, I would say if you can see some of my mom's paintings in mine, they'd be very similar in that, um, like I mentioned, my mom, many of her paintings had beautiful cloudscapes, low horizons, clouds. So, um, kind of like this top one would be um, a low horizon. Um, so, but but I probably I'm more prolific than my mom is. My mom is talented and as wonderful as she is. She's and she's 86 now, and she lives with me, so we share a gallery. I mean, a, a studio, and her um, her wonderful easel is set up 
right next to my little puny easel. But, um, and she still, I will, and I, I didn't mention this earlier, but um, you know how they say mother knows best? Now that I feel like I'm a little bit more accomplished when I ask my mom to critique my work, she always will say, I think you ought to take this building out, or I think you ought to take, and I don't want to do it. But she's always right. She's always right. And so she just still is, is kind of coaching me, and, and I will sometimes give her advice, believe it or not, she'll ask my advice. But, um, so my mom's and my style is much more s similar. Um, and the things that we're drawn to are more similar. Whereas um, I think my daughter is a little bit more abstract. Um, but really cool. <laughs> She's gonna be famous one day. We're just gonna 